ಓಮ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಅನದರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ this is the 15th verse from the second chapter yam hi na vyathayantyete purusham purusharshabha sama dukha sukham dhiram somrutatvaya kalpate if you notice there is one word dhira that was there in the earlier verse also which we discussed last three days uh, ಧೀರಸ್ತತ್ರ ನ ಮುಹ್ಯತಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಸಮ ದುಃಖ ಸುಖಂ ಧೀರಂ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಅಡ್ರೆಸಿಂಗ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ ಪುರುಷ ಋಷಭ ಇಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ ಬೈ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ in both he is certainly eligible for liberation now here the word for liberation is amrutatva what is this amrutatva amrutatva literally means opposite of mrutatva mrutyu or mruta mruta means death mrutyu means death so uh, one can uh, become or one can attain immortality so krishna is telling how our normal condition is that uh, at the end of a certain life span at the end of duration of life in a particular body we have to quit this body but after quitting this body the question should be asked am i going to get another similar body or i am going to get a spiritual body so this possibility itself many people don't know the first point is that i change body at death and if i change body what kind of body i am going to get so uh, here krishna is informing us educating us you are you can become eligible to um, get uh, immortality no more death a body which will not die a body which will not die so uh, our normal uh, condition in this world is we are born then there are the miseries of uh, disease old age and death whereas there is another position when there is no birth no disease no old age no death so that position we should understand so it is explained here as spirit soul we are all amruta we are deathless but to attain that state of no more death no more birth no more old age no more disease we have to prepare 
And what is that preparation? That preparation, Krishna is telling, if you become dhira, if you become a sober person, self-realized. And what is the symptom? Samas dukkha sukham. If not, if you are not disturbed by happiness and distress, and is steady in both conditions, situations, then you are eligible for amritatva, for immortality. No more disease, no more old age, no more rebirth, no more death. So this is very, very, very desirable. Nobody likes to die, nobody wants disease, nobody likes to become old. So definitely this is very, very desirable. Now people are trying to avoid death, they are trying to avoid disease, they are trying to avoid old age. But it is not possible to avoid these inevitable uh, miseries by some material methods, by some material adjustment. That is not possible. In fact, before this uh, uh, branch of science called chemistry, there was something called alchemy. Alchemy is a forerunner of this chemistry. And in alchemy, in the earlier days, in um, say about 200, 300, 400 years back, those who were involved in this subject called alchemy, they had two goals. They were always trying to formulate or discover or prepare a, a, a chemical which can turn any base metal to gold. Just like it can turn iron to gold, just by the touch. Uh, what is called as uh, touchstone, what is called as paraspathar uh, um, in Hindi they say paraspathar. In Sanskrit it is called chintamani. So that was one of the aims of alchemy. And the second aim was they wanted to discover or prepare some kind of uh, decoction or concoction. If you drink that, which they call Amrita, you will never die. You will live forever. So these two uh, aims or goals of alchemy, we can understand how people were very, very uh, eager and anxious and very uh, much desire, desirous of this immortality. Nobody wants to die. But Krishna is telling here, there is a, a specific way of attaining this immortality. Uh, that is, uh, sama dukkha sukham dhiram, become a dhira, become sober. So, uh, already earlier it was explained one who is a dhira, one who is sober is not bewildered by the change of body at death. One who understands that death is not a destruction of everything about a person but actually death is the body is going to change. Of course it's a it's a different kind of change. It's not exactly the kind of change that we have experienced from childhood to youth to old age. No, it is different. This change is different. That the resemblance is not there. Neither we are able to uh, figure out uh, which is that body, where is that body, what kind of body, we are not able to figure out. So, it is different, definitely, uh, uh, than the change of body from childhood to youth to old age. It is different, but nevertheless, it is a change of body only. It is a change of body. So, if one can remain undisturbed with the change of body, just like 
proper use example, let's say my grandfather died. If I got a clear understanding, actually my grandfather, the person has not died. It is only his body, which, which is old and becoming useless. That body he has given up and he has accepted another body. And that's a real fact. That's the truth. That's the reality. So then there is no cause for lamentation. There is no cause for any, any, uh, any dukkha. So that's how one can tolerate this dukkha, this uh, distress. Hmm? Uh, so Srila Prabhupada gives an example to help us understand. Like in our sleep, we have experience of dream. What happens in the dream? In the dream, I create another body and I go different places. I assume different uh, positions. Uh, let's say in the dream, I have become a king or I'm a king. So I have, a, I have entered the body of a king and then I am sitting on a throne and I'm doing so many things, enjoying some royal uh, comforts. But actually, this may last for very, very short time. When I wake up in the morning, then I know, oh, that was just a dream. It's not of any consequence. Not of any consequence. So, this is like a pleasant dream. So, we don't take it very seriously. We just completely ignore it. Even if there was a, a bad dream, let's say somebody in the dream is seeing a tiger chasing. Oh, there is tiger, tiger. I will save myself. And sometimes out of extreme fear, somebody may even scream in the dream itself or while sleeping. So the person who is sleeping next to you, who is not seeing that dream, Say, where is tiger? You say, tiger, tiger, tiger. Where is tiger? There's no tiger. It's just a dream. Wake up, wake up. So as soon as you wake up, you see there's no tiger. Then you understand, oh, that was a dream. So like this, in the dream, it is a fact that we take another body, another position. And that lasts only for the duration of the dream. That's all, that body. Then we give up that body. We come back to the body from which we had left and gone to take another body. Of course, uh, what happens in the dream is a subtle body. It's a subtle body. It's not a gross body. In our wakeful state, we are actually having a, a gross body. In addition to the subtle body of the mind, intelligence and ego inside this gross body. But mainly we work with this gross body in the wakeful state. In the dreaming state, it is only the subtle body. But that subtle body is created for a short duration and it is uh, finished when the dream is over. So one who knows that dream after all is not real. So then that person is not going to take whatever happened in the dream very seriously. He will completely ignore it and go on with the, the, the facts in the wakeful state. But what we should remember is even in the uh, daytime, this body what we have is like that body which we got in the dream. Why? Just like the dream body may last few minutes or maybe one hour. This body also will last say 80 years. But after 80 years when I quit the body everything is finished. Whatever the possessions, whatever the achievements, whatever the uh, relationships, everything is over. 
supposing i had worked very hard and built a nice house or i had purchased a car or i had so many nice family members with whom i had i have relationship very good relationship everything is finished when death comes everything is finished so in the next life the previous life is like a dream it's like a dream it's all over first of all we don't remember and even if somebody is able to remember what is its value it's just a memory that's all if at all somebody has a memory it's all finished it's over so like that we should understand whether it is wakeful state or sleeping state both are dreaming one is prabhupada says one is a day dream other one is a night dream the night dream is very short and it is changing very fast every night whereas this day dream lasts maybe for 80 years or 60 years or 100 years maximum 100 years so because it lasts for 100 years during that span of 100 years you think oh this is reality but actually that is this uh, day time with this body whatever we are doing whatever we are experiencing it is another temporary experience only this we have to understand from the bhagavad gita so therefore just like in the night dream whether you had a pleasant dream or unpleasant dream whether it was sukha or dukha it is not really of any consequence when you wake up similarly when you quit this body at that time of after quitting this body what is the relevance of what all sukha dukha you had you experienced in your past life we have had many many uh, we have experienced we gone through many many lives so in the past lives we might have been whatever uh, position we might have had some sukha some dukha some distress some happiness some wealth or we might have been poor all that is gone past over finished no more any relevance no more any importance no more of any value so like that we have to understand uh, that uh, this life in this body or in the even in the dream or whatever the experience is experience is real please don't think that these experiences are not real these experiences are real in spite of the experiences being real because it is something that is just passing it is coming and going it is temporary it is not permanent it is not eternal therefore of no consequence while the dream lasts we may be having fear or we may be having some pleasant uh, feeling when we having some uh, nice uh, experience that is not denied that is not false but in any case whether it is a pleasant experience or unpleasant experience from the perspective of eternity it has no real value at all in the perspective of eternity so don't become completely engrossed in a spot life of uh, 50 years or 80 years or 100 years no we are meant for eternal life we are meant for eternal life just say like krishna krishna is eternal krishna's form is eternal krishna's abode is eternal krishna's associates are eternal we are also one of the parts of krishna we also belong to krishna each one of us so we are meant for that eternal life we are not meant for this temporary life of uh, 50 years or 80 years or 100 years no we are not meant for this and in any case however nice it may be your situation may be nice 
but it is not going to last and it's not of any use for the future absolutely no use because your next life is not based on what you were in this life it has no relation at all absolutely no relation maybe you did some uh, punya karma you may get another body which is nice in the next life but even that will be over that will finish that will also be for a short while for some duration limited duration like this we go on changing body after body after body after body but one fact remains always through all such material bodies all material lives that is the constant factor please remember is the miseries uh, the uh, disease old age death that is always there that's the nature of this material body that's another reason the scriptures uh, warn us don't try to find some material uh, solution to these three problems three these three miseries fundamental miseries disease old age and death though for some temporary relief if somebody gets some disease they may take some treatment or take some medicine that's okay but don't depend totally on such remedies because though there may be some cure for some particular ailment or disease there is no possibility that we can totally eliminate disease altogether that is not possible because the nature of the body, construction of the body is like that the body itself is made like that you do little overeating there is indigestion uh, or now especially somebody contacts an infection even in spite of taking all precautions somebody uh, contacts an infection then uh, they have to actually uh, um, the consequences are there the infection will take time to actually show off the symptoms and then we have to Uh, face the consequences the difficulties similarly old age invalidity due to old age and finally death which actually uh, takes away everything mrutyu sarva harascham uh, everything is taken away at the time of death uh, so uh, the real solution is nothing material is no material adjustment that is possible for overcoming these fundamental miseries for making a, a a ultimate permanent solution to get rid of these three miseries completely there is no such material solution there is no such material solution so therefore krishna is teaching uh, the bhagavad gita try to understand he is telling arjuna's problem was that uh, in this battle if i kill my uh, kinsman then i will be without my near and dear grandfather or my teacher i lose them so krishna is telling please understand that uh, because this is a dharma yuddha they are going to change the body if they die in this battle they going to change the body for better one uh, they going to give up this body and accept a new body which will be a better one because this is dharma yuddha in which they are fighting so there is no cause for lamentation there is no cause for any grief that is what krishna is instructing and krishna is telling no, not just a better body in the next life he is telling there is a way of getting the best body eternal life that is what krishna is talking about amrutatva kalpate so we should really be uh, excited about this that uh, krishna is telling us about immortality 
immortality means uh, no more disease no more death at all completely we are free from all miseries all miseries a life of eternal life full of bliss and knowledge no ignorance uh, no anxiety vaikuntha you know, the spiritual world is called vaikuntha vaikuntha means no um, anxiety no anxiety at all no worries so that is what krishna is uh, teaching us here you can become eligible for this immortality eternal life full of bliss and knowledge if you become dhira if you become uh, undisturbed due to this change of body at death and while living in this body you learn to tolerate some temporary happiness and distress in an earlier verse krishna says matra sparshastu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkhada agama apayina anitya tam titikshya swabharata while we are living in this body and preparing for immortal um, um, immortality attaining immortality after quitting this body while we are living in this body krishna says there will be some uh, occasional uh, happiness and distress happiness of course we don't mind at all but distress if there is some occasional distress some uh, some difficulty or some dukkha some distress krishna says titiksha tolerate learn to tolerate understanding that it is just a temporary uh, phase any distress while we are in this body it will just come and go it will come and go it will come and go and by practicing spiritual life we are able to develop tolerance positively uh, develop this quality of uh, tolerance how how do we develop tolerance we actually prepare our mind it is actually more than the body the external body it's the inner mind which actually becomes completely uh, disturbed when there is some difficulty or distress or pain or suffering for the body so uh, first of all we under- we should understand from the bhagavad gita that this pains and uh, distress pertains to the body and mind and mind as far as mind is concerned the mind can be trained can be prepared to be not affected by the bodily distresses by the bodily pains by the bodily um uh, uh, whatever bodily conditions so we can prepare so the the best preparation is this practicing chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare chanting the holy names of the supreme lord krishna that way we can prepare our mind to learn tolerance if there is any distress if there is any anxiety if there is any pain due to this body and of course we can never uh, um, totally avoid we try to avoid as far as possible we try to avoid uh, pains and uh, uh, diseases and all that but in case in spite of uh, trying to keep ourselves a uh, fit condition sometimes if there is any pain or any distress krishna says learn to tolerate so how do we tolerate by engaging our mind regularly in chanting and hearing the hare krishna mantra so it takes some little time to practice this chanting of hare krishna whereby we can get absorbed in chanting and hearing when we are absorbed in chanting and hearing we will not give attention to the uh, distresses the pains uh, 
which uh, may occasionally come. Pray if we learn tolerance and also prepare ourselves, uh, then we can actually uh, become eligible for immortality. So I have some questions here. I'll try to answer them. When we offer condolences to the family of a person who has left the body, we say we may say, may his or her soul rest in peace. What is the significance of this? Actually, this uh, rest in peace, soul rest in peace, is actually atheistic uh, understanding. The atheists think that after a person dies, uh, no matter what nonsense the person might have done, whatever sinful activity, it doesn't matter because everything is finished. But if there is something like soul which is not uh, uh, going to die, or oh, that soul, let it be simply lying in peace. That is their wishful thinking. The fact is, there is no question of uh, soul resting after uh, quitting this body at the time of death. No. One is forced to accept another body. One is forced to accept another body. So, this concept of uh, soul rest in peace is completely atheistic. As devotees, as followers of uh, authorized uh, uh, scriptures, bona fide scriptures, we understand that at death, the, any person, every person who has taken birth is going to change the body and they will get another body. So there is no question of uh, praying or wishing soul rest in peace. No. Another question. After going back to Krishna, is it that we may come back again to this material world? No. We never come back to this material world after going to Krishna because it is said in the Bhagavad Gita, Yad gatva na nivartante taddhama paramam mama. Many places in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says this. If you come to me, you never again take birth in this world of repetition of birth. And death. No. So, uh, that brings us to the uh, next question. Uh, when the spirit soul fell down from the spiritual world, this question many times uh, arises that uh, we were in the spiritual world and we fell down from the spiritual world to this material world and then uh, the question arises how did we fall down, when did we fall down, why did we fall down, so many questions. So first of all we should understand a very very fundamental thing when it is said we were in the spiritual world we should understand we belong to Krishna's world. We belong to the spiritual world. We are always a resident of the spiritual world. We are always a resident of the spiritual world. We belong to that world. We don't belong to this world. Then what is my present position? My present position is just like at night when you go to sleep. You are lying on the bed. But if you are experiencing a dream in the dream you may be walking somewhere or talking to somebody or doing some other activity now uh, if you were to analyze during the dream state are you actually lying on the bed or are you uh, doing something else according to the experience in the dream so as you understand both are true it is not that in the dream body, in the subtle body, it is a fact that you are experiencing something what you are uh, going through in the dream. And the gross body, the wakeful state, that body, that body is lying on the bed. Both are true. Similarly, our spiritual form is always with Krishna. In our relationship with Krishna, in our position, uh, situated in our original position with Krishna, it's always in that. Now we are in a dreamlike condition. We are going through this material experience in a dreamlike condition. That is another reason why Srila Prabhupada says, 
you simply are going through in this material life daydream and night dream two kinds of dreams that's all uh, this is from the spiritual perspective that is just like a dream it just comes and goes and you think that this is uh, something real it is uh, it is uh, real in the sense that it's a real experience but there is no it is doesn't last it is just an experience that's all nothing remains nothing lasts just a question of time so therefore uh, there is no uh, question of actually falling down from the spiritual world it is just a case of forgetfulness forgetfulness of krishna forgetfulness of our self our original uh, self our original position with krishna in our spiritual position with krishna in the spiritual world so we never actually physically or anything like that we don't fall down it is just forgetfulness so this for revival memory has to be revived memory of krishna has to be revived if you see the end of bhagavad gita krishna asks arjuna one question after instructing the whole bhagavad gita krishna asks arjuna uh, are your doubts now dispelled uh, have you become free from all uh, uh, confusion so arjuna replies to krishna yes all my doubts are dispelled i have become free from all confusion my memory is revived nashto mohaha smritir labdha what is that revival of memory arjuna is revived revived his memory of his relationship with krishna so we also have forgotten our relationship with krishna we have forgotten krishna we have forgotten our self in our uh, spiritual position so we have to revive that memory by the process by the process of devotion service next question can you please explain about swadharma is it connected to body or soul swadharma in our present condition where we are forgetful of krishna we are forgetful of our self as spirit soul swadharma is connected to the body it is something to do with the body this like somebody is uh, got a particular nature acquired nature a acquired nature of uh, sattva guna sattvic then they are uh, uh, swadharma is that of a brahmana uh, brahmanical duties they have to do so that is suited for their acquired nature if somebody is uh, rajasik then they have to work like or do a duty of a kshatriya so that is suited for uh, rajasik nature rajasik uh, um, quality like that but there is something else called sanatana dharma that is our eternal dharma eternal duty eternal duty is in relationship with krishna it is completely spiritual it is something to do with the soul so that is after we uh, completely become situated in proper knowledge about who we are that i am spirit soul i am part of krishna i have a relationship with krishna so when we become situated in proper understanding proper knowledge and all our misconceptions are clear then our actual dharma begins sanatana dharma real dharma the actual eternal dharma eternal dharma begins eternal duty eternal activity begins and that is devotional service so the goal of this uh, swadharma in terms of uh, acquired nature and some uh, duties which we have to do in this life in this body uh, all that is aimed at uh, ultimately coming to the position of sanatana dharma it is aimed at that provided you follow the scriptural directions or follow the authorized process simply by doing some self assumed duties people cannot uh, uh, automatically come by doing any so called duty uh, no you have to do your duties in accordance with scriptural directions and then you you can expect that if you follow the scriptural directions you will come to the state of 
Sanatana Dharma, eternal position, eternal duties. We'll stop here. Thank you. Hare Krishna.